All right, everyone, welcome to today's new student chapter orientation webinar. My name is Shannon Reed. I'm the Director of Community Engagement with the Electrochemical Society. I appreciate you all taking your time out of your day today to join the orientation. Um, I have a couple of things for the agenda for us to go over. Um, I'll introduce myself, talk a little bit about the society, and then delve into some more um, student chapter related material, and then show you where several of your resources for your student chapter are located on the ECS Student Center webpage. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Shannon. Um, I'm currently the Director of Community Engagement for the Electrochemical Society. Um, and what that means is that I not only help to manage membership, both individual, student, and our organizational memberships, but I also work with our student chapters on our sections, several of our awards programs, as well as our fellowships, including the Toyota Fellowship, um, travel grants for our biannual meetings, our continuing and professional development education, the marketing for the society, as well as our exhibit sponsors and advertising program. Um, the individual that you will most likely be interacting with on a one-to-one -one basis, particularly as it comes to um, student chapter reimbursements, will be Mary Hodgelow. She's our membership and constituent services specialist. She can always be reached at the customer service at electrochem.org email. So a little information about ECS. Um, many of you are probably already familiar with it. And if not, um, we each get to learn something new today. Um, so the Electrochemical Society was founded in 1902 as a nonprofit educational organization. And even in its early years, the membership included an impressive core of active participants, such as Edward Acheson, the original manufacturer of graphite, and Herbert Dow, the founder of Dow Chemical Company. Even Thomas Edison is an honorary member of the society. We also have several notable members. Um, it includes the co-founder or co-founder of Intel, Gordon Moore, Alan Bard, who is regarded as the father of modern electrochemistry, and Esther Takuchi, who invented the battery that powers the implantable cardiac defibrillator. We also have several notable members that have published with ECS. Um, many of them, the ones listed here are Nobel Prize winners. Um, and for those of you who haven't come across the information, um, ECS has had three members uh, announced as the Nobel laureates in chemistry for this year for the development of the lithium ion battery. So in addition to those that published with ECS, we have several Nobel Prize members within our community. ECS has 13 division and topical interest areas. Um, this helps to strengthen the diverse interests within the society and were established for the society in 1921. ECS divisions represent established technical areas through which members may become active. In these groups, friendships and partnerships are made leading both to better research and publications. ECS divisions provide travel grants for students so they can attend meetings and many offer awards to recognize their members' accomplishments. The vision of ECS is to be recognized as the steward of electrochemical and solid state science and technology. By creating uninhibited availability of the science through open access, ECS can free the science and accelerate scientific discovery and innovation, leading the community as the advocate, guardian, and facilitator of our technical domain. The scientific advancements at the forefront of the ECS community are facilitating solutions for our world's greatest challenges in energy, transportation, water, communications, and sustainability of the planet. ECS constituents and stakeholders include more than 8,000 international scientists, researchers, and engineers from more than 75 countries and approximately 50 institutes and government labs. We also have over 1,000 academic and corporate libraries whose patrons number in the tens of thousands. So needless to say, ECS is a very global and expansive um, organization. 
a little more about student chapter membership. So getting into those items that are a little more pertinent to you as a student chapter. Um, student chapter members receive free membership to ECS and that is renewable yearly. In order to renew your student chapter membership, you must complete the student chapter membership form each year. And I'll show you that on the website at the conclusion of the presentation. Benefits of student membership are the same as members. So you have access to the latest science in the digital library. Um, we also do uh, OA article credits, provide you an opportunity to meet and network with your peers, provides uh, very large discounts on our meetings and more. And you also receive the quarterly publication interface as a student member. ECS holds international biennial meetings, um, each attended anywhere by 2,000 and 4,000 scientists, engineers, industry leaders, researchers, and students from academia, industry, and government labs. This allows individuals to meet face-to-face -face and share their research results and focus on critical issues. The Society also holds international topic meetings and symposia each year on specific topics in line with our technical interests. The most recent meeting, or the upcoming meeting um, for 2020, the first in the spring is gonna be the 237th in the ECS meeting, which is co-located with the 18th International Meeting on Chemical Sensors. That'll be held in Montreal, Canada from May 10th through 15th. And then our largest meeting is Prime 2020. This is um, coordinated with the Electrochemical Society of Japan and the Korean Electrochemical Society and attracts more than 4,000 attendees. So we have a large program October 4th through the 9th for the Prime 2020 meeting. ECS publishes four peer-reviewed journals devoted to electrochemistry and solid state science and technology. The society is committed to open access peer review standards, and the shortest acceptance to pub publication lag times anywhere, um, as well as broad dissemination and discoverability and the publication of special focus issues where ECS editors are spotlighting what's hot and what could be the next big thing. ECS publications contain high impact research that becomes more relevant every day. 65% of ECS's published work involves the sustainability of our planet. Our flagship publication, the Journal of the Electrochemical Society, has been continuously published since 1902 and remains one of the most highly cited in electrochemistry. It is the only electrochemistry journal published by a nonprofit society. Along with our journals, ECS publishes Interface. The quarterly magazine of record for the society is filled with the latest developments in the field as well as news for and about our ECS members. And I'll talk a little bit more about how student chapters can um, report out on what they're doing in their chapters and in their community and showcasing events to attract interest and let the community know what's going on with your chapter. All ECS content is available in one seamless resource through our digital library. The digital library is an easy to search high tech platform that ensures a progressive atmosphere for the exchange of knowledge and ideas. The digital library is constantly growing and currently hosts more than 151,000 articles and abstracts. Since 1902, the ECS mission has been to disseminate scientific information to the widest, widest possible audience with the fewest barriers. To fully meet that mission, ECS launched Author Choice Open Access for its four journals at the beginning of 2014. The author's choice open access plan is the first step on ECS's road to free the science. Open access has the power to change not only scholarly publishing, but to change the nature of scientific communication itself. Through free the science, ECS can more evenly distribute the advantages now held only by those, those who can easily access the outputs of scientific research. Again, ECS's campaign towards, free, towards open access is called Free the Science. Um, and the pledge is simple and compelling. We wanna provide ECS content at no cost to anyone. So free to all, 
free to authors, free to all readers, and free to all libraries. The initiative will democratize the science, accelerate scientific progress, encourage innovation, and ultimately may help create jobs and identify solutions to pressing global problems. ECS helps young people discover the sciences through our student chapters. It is one of our most rapidly growing programs. Uh, the society provides the opportunity for students to understand electrochemical and solid state science, have a venue for meeting their peers and be recognized for their accomplishments and community service. And student chapters remember if we receive a free ECS membership. And each chapter has up to $1,000 um, in reimbursement funding available each year for chapter programming from ECS. Currently, ECS has 93 student chapters around the world. In order to set up student chapters for success, we want to make sure that you all are planning for any officer transitions, whether that's through elections, making sure that when other students graduate that are in leadership positions that there is someone to take their place. Um, making sure that you're recruiting on campus, so whether that's through a student organization, a discovery fair within your individual departments, et cetera, and then also retaining those students. And by retaining them, you'll need to engage them, so whether that's through activities and community service or other programming. We know that as part of membership that people join for people. So making connections with friends and colleagues and other individuals in your department and, and encouraging them to participate will help you to recruit and retain your student chapter members. Again, ECS has 93 student chapters around the world. We know that our student chapters serve as stewards and advocates of ECS and science and it provides that venue for meeting your fellow students on your campus and around the world. We support our student chapters because we know that you all are promoting um, scholarly activities and community service, whether that's through hosting symposia or invited speakers or serving in community service roles throughout your community, um, either on campus or off. To continue to make sure that your chapter is successful, not only will you need to um, have secession plans for when individuals graduate um, or transition out of leadership roles, but we also want to make sure that you and your faculty advisor have um, an understanding of their role and relationship with the student chapter. So first, we want you to build that relationship with your faculty advisor, and that is oftentimes a conversation um, that members of the student chapter, whether it's the executive committee or leadership board, um, need to have with the faculty advisor. Um, understanding what the faculty advisor's desired role in the student chapter is, whether they're going to be an advisor that is at every meeting and every event, or is an advisor that is more hands-off, laissez-faire, um, and uh, is there to support you and help remove any administrative roadblocks that you may run into as a student chapter. Um, so it's important for you to, while building that relationship, is to have that conversation regarding their level of engagement with the chapter. That'll also help you to set some expectations, um, both for the faculty advisor and for the student chapter, um, you know, understanding what role that faculty advisor plays. And then that's also a really great opportunity for the leaders within the student chapters to discuss what the student chapter members' roles and engagement um, is with the student chapter itself. One of the most coveted programs for our student chapters is the student chapter funding program. Um, student chapters can receive up to $1,000 in reimbursements each calendar year. So that's from January 1st for just through December 31st. And these are for events that are um, related to the student chapter. So whether that's having food at a chapter meeting to recruit new members, maybe you're participating in a student organization discovery fair, 
and you want to buy some tchotchkes or some giveaways to recruit new student members. Um, it can also help to pay for invited speaker travel um, to give a talk at your university um, or for, let's say, a poster symposia that you may ho be hosting at the university to which the student chapter is participating. Um, we do require that in order to receive funding that chapters must submit an annual report from the previous year. So your student chapter, even though it is new and was chartered at the end of 2019, you all will still be required to submit a 2019 student chapter annual report by February 1st, 2020. And I will show you where that form is located. I spoke previously um, about the Interface magazine for the society and how student chapters can leverage that to promote their events and activities. Uh, we do have some guidelines for Interface submission. Um, these are done quarterly. Please note that the dates on the screen are from 2020. I will share out the link um, and send an email after I'm done with the student chapter orientations to all new student chapters with the updated dates so you can mark your 2020 calendars. Again, this is a great way to promote, um, you know, if you're hosting officer elections or if you're doing a recruitment or retention campaign for your student chapter, maybe you're doing community service at a local high school um, to educate high school students in STEM or on electrochemistry. Those are all opportunities for you to highlight in Interface that's published quarterly. Student chapters also receive biannual meeting, I'm sorry, students also are eligible for biannual meeting travel grants. Um, most divisions do require that you are a student member uh, and there's an application process online uh, for this program. And typically you must have submitted an abstract to present either an oral presentation or a poster presentation at the ECS meeting. I believe the deadline for travel grant applications for Montreal, which is the 237th ECS meeting in May 2020, is February, Monday, February 10th. So we would need any of those interested applicants to submit their travel grant applications by that date. And those dates are always available on the website. ECS off also offers up to five summer fellowships each year. Each of the summer fellowships is awarded at $5,000 and the deadline for applications um, is January 15th of the award year. So if you're looking for additional funding to complete research over the summer um, in 2020, the deadline for you to submit uh, an application for an ECS summer fellowship would be January 15th, 2020. ECS also has a number of student awards. This, is, this listing is available under our program dropdown on our homepage. Um, many divisions and sections have their individual student awards that you can apply for as well. And all that criteria is available on the website. We of course want our student chapters and our student chapter members to stay connected with ECS. We have a ECS blog where we publish the most um, news related to e most up to date news related to ECS and the community. We also have a Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Instagram account. And we also want to make sure that student chapters are supporting the mission of ECS. So by serving in the community, um, hosting events on your campus. Uh, within your department, et cetera, are all ways that you help to support the society. Um, we want you to maintain your student chapter activity and your student chapter membership, because we know that our student members are going to be the future leaders within the society and within the field. And so that wraps up the PowerPoint presentation. So give me just one moment and I'm going to show you all where some resources are on the ECS website.
Great. So now everyone should be able to see the ECS homepage of electrochem.org. So from this page, you can navigate to the Student Center. It's under Membership. You click on this link, it'll take you to the Student Center webpage. Here, it outlines your benefits of membership. And as you scroll down the page, speaks about our awarded student membership program, and more importantly, our student chapter membership program. This is where you're going to access the application to renew your student chapter membership. All members of a student chapter must renew their memberships using this application annually. So you'll receive an email that tells you to renew your membership and you'll need to go to the website and click on this link here to go to the student chapter membership application. You'll complete this and we will process it on our end to renew your student chapter membership. This page also provides access to the student chapter directory. This can help you get in contact with other student chapters around the world and see what they're doing. Um, this will list the uh, officers and faculty advisor of the organization or of the chapter. So for example, if I wanted to look at Clarkson University, this logic is done by alphabetically by country and then state and city. So we'll scroll down to New York and click on Clarkson University, has their address as well as their chapter officers and their roles and the start date. It also allows you to email them. So if you click email, it'll provide you their email or open an email in your browser. Just as a heads up, uh, this is incorrect um, and has to do with an issue with our database. Unfortunately, to correct it, um, or unfortunately, we're not able to correct it at this time, so it will always read zero. But if you need an update, updated list of those individuals that are associated with your student chapter, you can reach out to um, Mary Hodgelow, and she can provide that list to you. So again, that's the student chapter directory. You can also see that some other organ or some other student chapters have a website. Um, that's available where they may be posting information. We can also list a Facebook group link here as well. Many of you are already familiar with the guidelines for starting a new student chapter, so I wanted to go over the current student chapter resources that are available here. So one is going to be the guidelines for maintaining an active student chapter. You want to you're going to need to make sure that you always have six student members um, to maintain active status along with the faculty advisor. This outlines um, the responsibilities from ECS's point of view for faculty advisors um, and then how to maintain active status for the student chapter. It also outlines some regulations regarding student chapter funding. So again, chapters are eligible up to $1,000 US dollars in reimbursement funding each year. It goes from January 1st to December 31st. We ask that reimbursements be submitted immediately following the event because funding is available on a first come first serve basis. So what that means is that ECS allots a certain amount of money at the beginning of the fiscal year. So on January 1 for all student chapters, and we spend down that amount as reimbursements come in. And although we've never run out of money at the end of the year, we want to make sure that student chapters are submitting their reimbursement requests in a timely manner. So that way we can get those checks out to those participants for reimbursement immediately. Student chapters will need to make sure that the reimbursement form is completed and submitted with each reimbursement for each of the events and chapter reimbursement funding cannot be used for the purchase of alcohol. Um, I know that in some instances, student chapters have wanted to purchase a bottle of wine for an invited speaker, or at a dinner, they've wanted to pay for um, wine for each individual. We cannot reimburse student chapters for those expenses. So 
please do not submit student chapter reimbursements with those expenses listed. Um, and we will need an itemized receipt for your expenses when you submit that reimbursement form. All right, and so those are the guidelines for maintaining an active student chapter. Next is gonna be the reimbursement form. This is an Excel document. Give me one second and I'll drag it over so you can see it. This form needs to be completed with each student chapter reimbursement request. You will need to supply the images of the receipts, um, the itemized and the total, along with an event flyer or meeting announcement and then detail the description of each of the expenses here. The, expen the amounts need to be in US dollars. We can reimburse for travel for invited speakers, um, either by mileage or for airfare, et cetera, along with hotel. Um, we would need to know the individual for the reimbursement, as well as where the check would need to be sent. You can copy and paste the images of the receipts here um, they do need to be legible, so please make sure that when you receive a receipt from a vendor that it is something that can be read, clear, or read easily. Moving on, um, you have an officer transition form. This is going to be when the student chapter hosts elections for both for their officers. It has the new officers and the previous officers listed. We'll need to know the date of the officer elections and when those transitions are taking place. So if a student chapter is hosting elections in May for the upcoming academic year in September, and that and the transition date is different than the date of the elections, let's say the elections are on May 15th, you'll need to host that date here. And then the term start date for the new officers is September 1st would be updated here. We also have a member status report. Um, again, it'll list your officers and then any members of the organization who have joined um, and those previous members. So if you have members graduate or no longer associated with the student chapter, ch chapter, you would list them here and we would update our database. This is the annual report. We do ask that the previous two forms the officer transition form and the member status report be submitted with this document. Um, it helps to make sure that our records are updated at least annually when we're receiving the annual report document. So it provides some chapter specific information um, as well as any recruitment efforts, annual activities that the student chapter has, any honors, awards, recognition, or accomplishments the student chapter receives. These don't, these don't necessarily have to be ECS specific, they can be uh, community service awards or recognition in your community, whether that's through your university or what have you. Um, and any, we wanna make sure that we're able to support and plan for any upcoming activities for the year with you all, as well as help you recruit new members. And then the last box is to let us know what support or assistance you may need, whether that is ideas for recruiting new members, or you're dealing with a transition of a faculty advisor, anything like that, we would want you to fill out here and we can devote resources to help you with that. Currently, this document is submitted directly to me and then we'll go through and update our database. An opportunity for our student chapters is the Outstanding Student Chapter Award. This is awarded annually um, and the nomination deadline is April 15th and that is for the previous year. So we've selected the 2019 Outstanding Student Chapter as well as the Chapters of Excellence. Um, and those applications were due on April 15th, 2018. The uh, 2020 Outstanding Student Chapter Award will be given uh, for applications received on by April 15th, 2020. Um, there's a number of recipient qualifications. You can access the form right here on the webpage. Um, and then the, it also lists the past recipients of the Outstanding Student Chapter. So the Outstanding Student Chapter not only receives the recognition, um, but they also receive a thousand additional dollars for any student chapter funding that they would like to do within, 18, within a year of receiving the award. And lastly, just to touch on those interface submission deadlines, 
Um, these are the same deadlines for not just student chapters, but also our divisions and sections. We have the submission deadline here. So all of them are on the 15th of the month quarterly, um, and it provides you the anticipated publication date. So knowing the publication date of the spring issue is gonna be March 27th. So members of the society would receive it at the end of March, beginning of April. You might wanna recap any of the winter activities that you as a student chapter have done, and then highlight any upcoming activities in the summer and subsequently report out on those um, in the summer issue, that content would be due April 15th. So um, those are some of the, or those are the deadlines for 2020. I'm happy to help with you all, or help you all with any of the content you would like to develop. Here are some of our basic submission guidelines, um, you know, writing it in third person, making sure that the material is timely, uh, being specific about the details, we're not looking for it to be, um, you know, a, a three or four page report. Many of our student chapter updates are a paragraph or two and just lets us know what's going on with those student chapters. <clears throat> and then also photographs are really important. Um, people like to see people. And so when you're submitting photo photographs, with your interface submission content. We do need written permission from the photographer, whether that's a person with a camera phone um, or an actual photographer that we are allowed to use that in the interface publication. That can be something as simple as a written email from that person who took the photo um, and we'll also attribute credit to them in interface. So again, if you need examples of this content, uh, there are links down here at the bottom. The student news, this is going to be our uh, previous issue of interface. Notice that, again, the updates for these student chapters are not lengthy at all, um, but they provide some great photos. Um, and again, really just lets us know what's going on with the student chapter and promotes the activities to the membership of the society. All right, and that seems like that is it for the student chapter orientation presentation.